so many of the reasons that you are stuck is because you are refusing the acceptance piece. And I'm telling you, acceptance is one of, I would dare to say, the foundation of where you're going to start to find peace. So let's chat about it. Welcome to episode 49 of the Positivity Experience. It's all about acceptance. Check it out. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to episode 49 of the Positivity Experience. I am your girl, Lori. And can I just tell you, your girl got Botox and fillers yesterday for the first time ever. And I'm going to tell you, I love it so much. Um, if you get a chance, go over to my uh, Instagram, official Lori Wheeler, and you can see the difference in pictures. Now, I didn't originally go in for cosmetically. I went in for medical first because um, it, we're in my uh, mentalis muscle, which is that muscle in your chin. It was always constricted. So I would wake up every morning like I was angry, like my upper lip would go down, my chin would come up, I had the orange peel skin. And the only way to relax that muscle, I tried gua sha, I tried all my natural products, all my natural things, um, you know, stimulate, you know, stimulation, everything. Guess what? Nothing works to relax it more than Botox does. And so um, I was going in medically to get that done. And while I was there, I had them fill like underneath my eyes. Oh, they did Botox too in like my 11s, around my eyes, you know, the, my smile lines. And they filled like right by my chin. Um, they did a little filler on my upper lip, but nothing crazy, just a little bit on the vermilion border. And I absolutely love it. And I'm like, okay, I have accepted that this is, this is good, right? And it's it works for me, you know, and I did document it. So I am going to put it up on YouTube in the next couple of days because I was waiting like a day or two thinking I was going to be bruised or extra swollen. I was mildly swollen at best and zero bruising. So um, I am going to post it so you can see my um, the entire process on how I did it and what he did. And I actually love it. So I just thought I'd give you a little heads up on that. And welcome to all of the new listeners, man. You guys have been reaching out to me on my Instagram, Official Lori Wheeler, um, my TikTok, all of these other places. And I just wanted to let you know, I appreciate you. I love you. And I, like I said, I just appreciate that you listen to this. And um, yeah, like I'm here for it, right? And that's all the more reason why I wanted this topic this week to be on acceptance, Oh boy, because acceptance and refusing to accept things is really what's one of the biggest things holding you back, right? You're refusing to accept that um, you let the perfect partner in your brain. The, you'll know that they were perfect, but you let the one get away. You let your perfect partner get away. And oh my God, you're just beating yourself up over it. Okay, that's not productive whatsoever. Not productive whatsoever. So what are you going to do about it? You have to accept that that time, what has passed, has passed. If you refuse to accept it, it doesn't change the fact. And see, that's where everybody gets, gets caught up is they go, well, how do I accept? Acceptance, refusing to acceptance is ego. I don't care if you don't like the word, it's what it is. You refusing to accept death is your ego. Like legitimately, it's called ego integrity when you and I'll do something a little bit on that like in one of the podcasts but if you don't accept it doesn't mean it's not going to happen because you can say you don't accept death all you want doesn't really matter it's going to come and and that's the acceptance piece of it but that's on a big scale but there's also so many other things on a on a scale that your day-to-day -day life that you are refusing to accept the past or you're refusing to accept somebody's choice in something you're refusing to accept fill in the blank. You're ref refusing to accept that it's going to be hard to heal yourself. You're refusing to accept that it's a lifelong process, right? And your refusal to acceptance, accept it, again, only affects you, okay? And this is so important for you to hear because listen, no one cares how you feel. No one cares that you're holding on to it, right? And, and that's important for you to understand because so much of the refusing to accept it um, kind of goes into not just ego, but a little bit of manipulation. Okay. I'm not saying that you're intentionally manipulating. Okay. But it is manipulation on the fact nonetheless, because let's say you're you're holding out uh, for somebody to change, I don't know, just change something, change the way they dress, change the way they talk, change the way they act, whatever, just change. And if you're holding that out, in some way, you're trying to hold that out over them, 
right? Even though you don't realize that that, well, maybe you do realize that that's what you're doing. Because you're like, well, listen, I refuse to accept it. So because I don't accept it, you can't do it. I'm gonna give you an example of that. So my husband's African American. Uh, my kids are biracial. Fortunately, I never had an issue um, with my family. Well, my mom had pretty much crossed when I was 14. So, um, but I never had an issue like with my dad or anybody else um, when I, and my first husband was also African American. Um, but when I started, you know, dating and, and getting serious, number one, I didn't ask anybody's permission, right? I'm not going to ask you for permission on who I should date. Um, and I think people knew early on that if you come at me talking about, well, why would you date outside your race or something crazy like that? Oh, we're just, I'm not going to discuss it with you. We're just, I'm not, I'm cutting ties. Like I can't get down like that. Like I'm not going to do it. Right. So now that being said, I've been good there, but a lot of other people may not have had that same experience. Maybe they're dating outside of their religion and the family doesn't like it. Maybe they're dating outside of their race or their gender and the family doesn't like it, and the friends don't like it. They refuse to accept it. I'm not going to accept this. So you know what? I'm going to disown you. I'm going to kick you out of the house. If that isn't ego and control and manipulation and gaslighting and just about anything else you want to throw in there, I don't know what is. You know what I mean? And so this is, that becomes control and power. And sometimes the refusal of accepting somebody, well, all the time, the refusal of, of accepting something like that, and I'm saying I'm using those specific things, as you know, in a way, and if you're like, well, that's just not what I believe. Okay, you don't have to believe it. And you don't have to accept it. But if you think you're not accepting it, right, means that the other person has to do what you want to do, so they can have you in your life. That is a massive you problem. Like period, mic drop every. That's right, mic drop, all of those things. Okay, so that's from an external perspective. Now let's talk internal perspective. And you know, we'll go back and forth because that's how my ADHD works. So you got a topic with me, you got a topic hop with me. So here's the thing with internally. Let's say you in this big imagination world of yours, let the perfect person go. First of all, stop it. There's no perfect person. Don't stop that. Um, and but let's say in your mind, you formulated, man, if I want to let that person go, my life could have been different. Yep, it could have been it could also be a lot more shitty. Just because you're like, Oh, that person was amazing. Listen, you can't hindsight it and then play out some scenario. But let's pretend that you're doing that. And you're going, I shouldn't have done that. Or I let that job go or I shouldn't have sold my house or I shouldn't have done these things. Okay, but we're here now. Regardless of how many hours and how many seconds and how much time you put into stressing about what could, should or why it happened, you are refusing to accept it and it doesn't change the fact period. See, it's fact now, because the fact is it's done. Now, it's not a fact that if you would have not let that perfect person, I'm over here in quotations using, per, you know, perfect person, um, you know, go that you would have had this amazing life. People can't give you the amazing life. And I'm not talking financially. I'm saying somebody can't give you your inner peace. You have to accept that. People are not meant to make you happy. They can add joy. They can be the icing on your cake. They are not meant to make you in inner peace happy. That's why it's inner freaking peace. So when people say, well, how do you accept? Is first of all, you have to work on that. That's why I exist. That's why people like me exist. That's why therapy exists. You have to allow yourself to get to the space especially if you're dealing with anxiety and OCD and ADHD and depression and bipolar and all of these other things that come into play, right? Here is the deal. And I've said this before, that is a reason that it is harder, but that is not an excuse. So you cannot say, listening to this, don't say, yeah, it's hard, you know, but I can't because I'm, I'm depressed or I can't because I have really bad anxiety. And yes, that's a reason that it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you, but it is not impossible. So you stop that. Stop that because then you say, I'm giving myself permission to not accept something. I just told you, if you don't accept it or you do accept it, the situation remains the same. Okay. And, and that you got to get that. You got to get that. Okay. Literally, when you fear death, it, 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 the, the whole concept of that is called ego integrity. So yes, it is ego that says that you cannot accept it. And don't go into some weird, oh my God, but I'm not, listen, 
It's your ego. Your whole life is ruled by your ego, your id, your ego, and your super ego. That's literally what makes you up. When you function throughout the day, your ego is carrying you through the day. It's just what part of your ego is going to go. Is it going to be the id, you know, that feels like you got to be in control of everything? Is it going to be the super ego who's like, well, these are my morals and this is how I'm going to function? You got to understand that. So everything that you do is based in your ego. So when I tell you ego integrity about death and then ego about not accepting something, that's exactly what it is. Now you can say my depression makes my ego, you know, makes it hard for me to release it. It does. That still doesn't mean that that's not your ego. It's not like you're intentionally doing it. So don't go getting all wrecked when you start hearing the word ego. Because it's literally what makes us up as human beings. Okay, so going back into that, right, going back into that topic of acceptance of, um, you know, what is gone is gone. And what is it, 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 you know, it is, is your refusal to accept it will also go into your obsessive thinking. And in your obsessive thinking, you'll start playing it out. Oh, my God, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? Okay, I will tell you this again. If I knew what the lottery numbers were going to be from last night, if I like now I know what the lottery numbers were last night, right? It's Saturday. I know what the lottery numbers were on Friday because they're they're out now. So that's like me going, okay, gosh, why didn't I play those right numbers yesterday? Like, why didn't I play 14 as the Powerball instead of six? Well, what the hell are you going to do that for? You're literally saying, I'm going to take the knowledge that I have And I'm going to beat myself up because I didn't do what I should have done and played the right numbers based on the knowledge that I have now. Don't don't do that. Do not do that. Don't be like, oh, my God, I can't believe I was in that wreck of a relationship. Wow, that was awful. That was awful, man. That was just terrible. Yeah, you know it now. So that goes into the acceptance that what you have done or what you think you haven't done or have done, you have to accept it. You don't have to love it. You're allowed to have your emotions. But if you're not in the acceptance piece, you will always stay stuck. Your anxiety will always be more. Your obsessive thinking will continue. Now, again, again, you do need life coaching, therapy, often medication, um, consistency. Remember, inconsistent actions gets inconsistent results. So I'm not asking you to go off and just turn off the podcast when it's over and then just go start accepting everything. But you do have to start your double journaling, right? Because here's the deeper issue, okay? So I want you to do this. We're going to do a little homework, okay? Uh, If you're driving, we're at like, say, 13 minutes. So if you're home and you don't want to go back to back through this and listen, just go to 13 minutes and I'll give you what the what the little bit of like in, introspective work will be. So I want you to go get a piece of paper. So if you're listening to this, pause, pause it and then go get some paper and pen and then come back to me. OK, so I gave you just a little second there. So here's what I want you to do is I want you to write down something that is really bothering you. Let's say, and I mean something, when I say bothering you, I mean something that you're really having a hard time accepting. Really having a hard time accepting, okay? Um, Just pick one thing. I know you probably have 100. Just pick one. Write it down on that piece of paper. Remember, pen to pad. We don't do this in our head or on the phone or on the tablet. So as you, when you've written that down, now I want you to start asking yourself, why, why? you are refusing or why you're struggling to accept it. Because by the way, acceptance acceptance is releasing. So let's be clear on that. If you accept something, you do start to release that, right? Like um, I did TikTok on it too, but like um, with everything that happened with my dad, he did not need to take the accountability in order for me to heal. That's the acceptance piece. Now, if your ego says, oh, my God, no, this person needs to be held accountable and you need they need to, you know, apologize or this needs to happen or that needs to happen. Listen, if it's something legality wise, you tell the cops, you hand it over to them, you got to let it go. You holding on to it and refusing to accept that you don't need their apology or their accountability for you to heal, for you to heal. That's what I'm saying. Okay, and so that again, that goes right into acceptance. So on that paper, when you start asking yourself why you are struggling to accept it, it's probably going to come down to a few different things. And let's chat about what they are. So 
one of it is going to be all about your feet. It's because it's all about you, right? This is the ego base because that's how we function in the world. So it is going to come down to you why you can't release it. Number one, let's say, and I'll go back to that um, sort of example I used about, let's say you're in a family and you're dating somebody outside of your race and, but your family refuses to accept it. Okay. And now you've moved out and you've gotten married and you haven't talked to the family at all. There's zero contact. It's literally no contact for the last like 10 years. And then what you're doing is you're sitting around Christmas and you're catching yourself being all caught up in yourself, like angry, right? You're angry. You don't understand because now you have a couple kids. You are, you are hateful to the parents. Like you haven't talked to them. You just have a lot of like anger, right? Which is really hurt. And if you're like, I refuse, and again, I'm not asking you to have a relationship with anybody. So don't misconstrue this. But I'm talking about that internal feeling that you're having. Okay. And um, let's say you're like, oh my God, I can't, I just can't accept that that's just how they are. That That's ridiculous. Well, it doesn't change the narrative. And the only person losing sleep over that is you. And so if you've written down, you know, my family, I haven't talked to my family in 10 years because of who I married, whatever. Ask why you can't release it because it's not fair. And I don't like, okay, first of all, life isn't fair. Stop with the fair. Stop it. Stop it. Stop. Because if you're always worried about that's not fair and this isn't fair, you again will be stuck. Right? It's, I'm not telling you to let people run on you, but you have to have your boundaries. If something can be done about it, you do something about it. And if you can't, you got to work on releasing it, which is accepting it. So when you get to your why, you're, it's probably going to come down to your hurt you don't feel like you were a priority. You feel as though you were never good enough to the person. You feel as though if they loved you, they would accept you regardless. Um, so the why is going to come down to you, right? It really is. Yes, their actions in this scenario, their actions caused you to sort of have this or to have this feeling. But you are refusing to release it because you were hurt. Because in that situation, you're going to be hurt, right? Your family's literally saying, I'm going to disown you because of who you're marrying. Like pick and choose the family or this person. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of a shitty thing to do. But the reality is you're refusing to release it because you were hurt. Because you wanted some fairness. You wanted this. I'm not saying that you're not allowed to want it. I'm not saying that you're not allowed to feel how you feel. Because remember, feelings aren't facts, they're perceptions. But to you, your feeling and your perception is very real. By all means, have that. But do not hold on to, like, what do you think is going to happen? Like, in, in this case, let's say your mom picked up the phone, mom and dad, they were all going to invite you over for dinner because, you know, they now know that, you know, love is love and, okay, you guys are coming over and you and mom start to have a come to Jesus meeting and you're talking and she says, yeah, I'm really sorry. I was just raised this way and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so all these things come up. It doesn't matter what she says. It doesn't matter what she says. You know why? Yeah, number one, you're probably not even going to believe it that much because now you haven't been talking for 10 years. It's almost like they, you don't even know each other anymore. So it's going to be hard to trust it, number one. Number two, you're, it's not going to fix like you think it is. And I think that's where people mistake the accountability or the apology. You're, you're really putting a lot of emphasis on that. And I got to tell you, it's not going to give you the outcome you think it is. I'm not saying it wouldn't make you feel good. I'm not saying you wouldn't get something out of it. Never said that. But it is not going to be this miracle thing that is going to come in. And all of a sudden, you're going to wake up like none of the trauma ever happened. That doesn't happen. You might feel a little bit better. You might feel some kind of way. But it doesn't change the fact. So again, you have to accept that what has happened has happened. And you have to accept that you have to move on forward in your life and sometimes without the people that you want in your life. Okay, and, and there is that acceptance piece. Another thing that people have a really hard time accepting is people aren't you. They don't have to send you a Christmas card because you did. They don't have to call you for Mother's Day because you do. That's not a thing. Now, Again, you're allowed your boundaries. That's the beautiful thing. If it doesn't work for you, then perhaps those people or situations should not be in your life. But to hold out and think this person needs to do it the way I do it and that person needs to do it the way I do it and, and this is how I would do it and this is how I would respond and this is what I do. Okay, no. You're, other people don't have to do that. 
They literally don't have to do that. I mean, my God, look, no matter where you are in the world, you have some leader of your country, right? And some people are going to be happy and some people are not. Well, what are you going to do about it? All you can do is vote. And I mean, I guess if you didn't like it and you had the means, you could move out of the country. So there is something you could do about it. Or you could just be miserable for four or eight years or however long in your country that it is. You don't have to love it. But why the hell would you sit there and stress yourself out for the next four to eight years? Right? That goes down to control. That goes down to lack, not being able to accept things. So again, don't mistake. That's right. I said mistake. So me and mistake are sitting here. So don't mistake acceptance for allowability. Two totally different things. Allowability is, okay, well, I'll accept it and I'll allow this behavior again. No, no, I'm not asking you that. That's you saying, telling that to yourself. Okay. And so accepting is how you free yourself. You move on. You don't have to hold on to something and let it weigh you down. When you refuse to accept anything, okay, it's literally pulling you down like an anchor. And, you know, in like I said, in some way, you think that you're controlling and protecting yourself. You can still distance from the people for sure. Absolutely. But to carry the lack of acceptance, that's you. That's literally like you every morning you're drinking some poison. And when it starts to wear off in the afternoon, you might think about it again, drink some more poison. It's just not going to give you the outcome that that you're looking for. And so when you hit that, you like I said, it's not a magic pill. You don't say, well, like, how do I do it? I just told you, you're going to have to really focus and work on it. And doing the on the paper, write down all, you know, individually, individually, I mean, on the same paper, but like individually, write down the things that you don't want to focus on, or I'm sorry, release, you know, and accept. So look at it, always put the why you can't accept it. Well, because I don't like how they do this. I don't like that. Okay. Don't like it. They do not have to change for you. And vice versa. Stop it. They're, the, people don't have to change for you. No, no. And sometimes in marriages, you have to accept that too. And I, again, acceptance is not allowability. For some reason, I think people put those two things together. Like if I accept my husband is this way, this is what I'm stuck with. Nobody said that. You have to accept that that's how they have been for the last 26 years. And you got to figure if you're if you're like, I can't do this, then you got to figure a way to get out. Right? The person isn't going to just change because you want them to and and you don't really want that to happen. Because I promise you right now, it's like somebody saying, I'm gonna go to therapy for you. No, oh my God, no, do not go to therapy for me. Go to therapy because you need the therapy or that we're working on something. But if you're in couples counseling, you both better be an individual in counseling. It's not just couples counseling and that's it. That's never gonna serve your best and highest good. Because all you're gonna do is go there and it's not gonna, you're not gonna be able to integrate it because you're not doing your own work. So again, do not mistake acceptance for allowability. And that's where you struggle. You struggle because let's say in that scenario, you really wish that you would have had mom, even though you say you hate or you don't like her, all this stuff, she can go to hell. You can say all that. Deep down inside, you, you, you're, you're hurt by it. Okay, and don't be like, no, fuck her. Like, I'm not, no, trust me, you're hurt by it. Okay, so that's my, my point is they don't have to do what you want them to do. And when you go through your why, Ask, why can I not allow myself to release that person or release the situation? Because to accept means in many cases, you're going to have to release something or somebody. So your struggle is not wanting to release the mom, even though you say, well, we haven't talked 10 years anyway. Okay, but have you accepted that you may never talk again? Yeah, it's good. I don't want to talk to her anyway. Okay, so you're carrying the anger, which lets me know that you still care. Because if you don't care, and if you've moved on from it, it doesn't trigger you. Again, I could talk about my sexual abuse with my dad and order a pizza in the same conversation and have the same emotion. And no, I'm not numb. I've just worked through it. I don't, I'll talk to, I'll talk to anybody about my sexual abuse. Like I'm ordering something. Because it's part of who I am now. Not the abuse, but it's happened. Like it's, it's part of who I am. It's, it's my genetic DNA now, like not genetic, but it's my DNA. It's not ingrained in it 
like officially, but I'm saying it is who I've been for many, many years, but I've taken the, the positivity of the growth from learning it and not only have helped myself, but I help people all around the world now. I, good chance I wouldn't have done that had that not happened to me. Right. And again, I'm not co-signing for anybody to have to go through that to be some successful person. But what I'm saying is whatever you're struggling with, you got to take some power from it, man. You got to take what the, the hurt and transfer that into uh, motivation. Right. Because, you know, motivation is a bullshit word anyway. But you can take it and you can turn it into power and not wait. But you got to do it. It's not easy. The hardest part about the acceptance is control. To not release, accept, or to not accept and not to release is control, and control is ego. You know what I'm saying? So you got to look and say, why am I a controlled, why do I feel the need to be controlled? Again, do not use abuse and how you grew up as an excuse. That is a reason, that is not an excuse. So you do not get to say, well, that's just how I am. Negative. No way. No way. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. You do not get to use that of that's how I am or that's how I was raised. Great. That's how you were raised. And guess what? You're on your own now. You don't have to do the same things. That's somebody else's false narrative. That's someone else's false beliefs. Not yours. You have to accept that you can't please everybody. You cannot please everybody. Oh my God, how exhausting would that be? Everyone has their own limited belief. There's a whole podcast that I have on limited beliefs, like somewhere in the teens, I think. And you got to listen to it because your belief system is your belief system. You don't have to adopt anybody else's belief system. Mine, your mom's, your dad's, I don't care. You don't have to accept anybody's, right? The stuff I'm talking to you guys about, I'm telling you, it frees you. You you don't have to take it. You can be like, well, I'm not going to listen to you. Okay, don't. I promise you I'll sleep the same tonight as I would if you did. And I'm not saying that to be an asshole. I'm saying it because if you refuse to grow and you refuse to to do the things that are uncomfortable, you're going to stay stuck. And there's going to be a time that people around you may move forward without you. Because very often, and again, I'm not saying on the levels if it's something really bad. I'm saying if it's something like, You can't accept somebody's voting thing. Like, oh my God, you've seen so much of that happening this year because of the vaccine. Um, I don't know how it is in many other countries, but here in the States, it's like a problem because everybody is like, do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. Problematic, right? I mean, the it's it's really not that deep like as we're going into the christmas holiday here in the states um well i guess it's anywhere but um as we're going into the christmas holiday and people are like all bent when some people aren't vaccinated some people are vaccinated okay just don't have christmas with them like why are we making this bigger deal because if it, like i'm a vaccinated house like we just are we're vaccinated here and it's just how we roll right? Um, So if you come to my house, number one, we're going to try to stay outside if you're not vaccinated. Number two, you're definitely not coming into the south house without a mask. Like that's just not happening. And you'll wear it the entire time and you'll stay super far away from all of us. Okay. And I should I should also point out that would be very minimal. There'd probably be like two people or three people I may let in in the house do that. But and and I'm just not I'm not going to sit there and argue with you about it. Just don't get it. That's fine. But I tell you what, you're not going to come to my house and I'm not going to go to your house. I'm not doing it to be manipulative. I'm not saying you better get this. I don't care what you do, but I care what I do. Right. And so that's the acceptability of it is. But I want all my family here. You can want all you want, but you got to accept not everybody's going to do it the way you do. So you got to sit on that because 90 percent, let's say 85 percent of what's holding you back right now is acceptance. Acceptance that when you start something, you might fail it. Guess what? Failure is learning. Mistakes are lessons. Oh, I don't know if I could do that. Okay, well, then you're not accepting it. Then you're going to stay stuck. So accepting doesn't have to just be some big giant thing. Accepting is that too. Take the risk. Accepting that you're never too old to start something new. Okay, so, but you got to accept that. You can't chalk shit up to being like, well, this is just, this is how it is. I'm 60 now. I can't do anything. No, no, that's a false narrative. Stop that. Stop limiting yourself. You're limiting yourself. All right. So 
I think that's a really good part to just kind of like stop here and let you kind of marinate on that for a while. Because you have to know why you're not accepting, why you are having a hard time accepting it. Then we can start addressing the why. But you just don't get to say, well, I don't know, I just can't accept it. I'm not, I'm not sure why. Great. Dig deeper. Well, I mean, I, I just think it's not fair. Okay. Why does that bother you? Well, because it's not fair. Again, stop that. You already said that. Stop repeating yourself. You got to challenge your why to get to the why beneath the why beneath the why beneath the why to get to what the real issue is. And then you have to accept that it's nobody else's responsibility to make you inner peace happy. That is something you have to accept. No one in your life is going to spend 100% of their life with you. You are the, you got to accept this right here. You are the only person that will spend 100% of your life with you. Not any of these other people. So the person that you keep looking at and you keep cutting down and you keep holding shit over their head and you keep self-sabotaging, you're literally in an abusive relationship with yourself. Stop it. And remember, acceptance is never allowability.